Hello YouTube, I hope you're having a fantastic day. In today's video, we're looking at the Word 2019 exam and we're looking at the domain for the exam called Manage Documents. Overall, this accommodates for 20 to 25% of the overall exam. I'll go ahead and throw up a graphic so you can look at this domain with me. This video began to get a little long, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make this a two-part series. This is the second video, and in this video, we're gonna cover format documents and inspect documents for issues. Let's go ahead and jump into Word. We're talking about the Word 2019 exam, and we're looking at the first domain called Manage Documents. We're on the second subdomain, Format Documents. The first thing that tells us that we should be able to do is to set up document pages. Let's go to the Layout tab, and where we're going to focus is in the Page Setup group. If you click the Margins dropdown, you have some pre-built margin sets that you can apply, or if you click the Custom Margins, you have the option of keying in your own margins. So maybe I want 0.5 on the top and 0.5 on the bottom, and I'll leave the left and right margins alone. In this section, you also have the page orientation. So you have it at portrait currently, but you could change it to landscape. You can also do that from the ribbon, should you choose. And as you're applying some of these things, you can apply it to the whole document or this point forward. Let's go ahead and close out of this. In that window, we could have changed the page orientation, but you can also do it from the ribbon. If you wanted to change your page size, you have the option of doing that, and you also have more page sizes if what you need is not in this list. Adding columns to your documents, part of a different domain, as well as page breaks. But some things while we're in here is the line numbers. You can set up your line settings through here, and you can also play with the hyphenation settings. In addition to that, you have the page setup dialog launcher box if you click that which brings this window up that we saw before. But in addition to margins, you have the paper settings and you also have the layout settings. In this section, you can have your section start in different places. You have your page, your vertical alignment. For page one, I have it set at center, but we could change it to top. And again, we can apply to the whole document or from this point forward, we'll go ahead and click OK. Notice that those changes went ahead and updated here. This subdomain also tells us that we need to be able to apply style sets. We're going to go to the design tab. We're in the document formatting group and across the ribbon here are our style sets. If we click the more button, we can see them a little bit further. Each style set's a little bit different and it'll apply different things like a font or colors to your document. Let's go ahead and apply this shaded and we can see that that went ahead and changed some of the settings in my document. While we're here, you should be familiar with things like colors if you wanted to apply a color scheme and fonts you can also do that specific font set and then we might as well talk about themes as well if it tells you to apply a theme there's a lot in here that you could choose from my advice in the style set section is don't be afraid to hover over the different sets to try and find what you need don't just guess this subdomain tells us that we should be able to insert and modify headers and footers we're going to go to the insert tab to do this and on the exam it might say something like have this text at the top of the page or add this website at the bottom of the page or it might even have you put in some properties so we're on the insert tab we're in the header and footer group let's click the header drop down because you can see here we have some built-in headers to choose from and they're all named and you're going to see the same thing with the footers let's go ahead and click edit header and notice it puts us in the top of our document. And in our header and footer section, we have those same built-in things that we just looked at. In the insert group, we can add things like date and time, document info. So maybe we wanted to add that document title we talked about. And went ahead and put that property there. And if we add a property to the document, it will populate here. Let's go ahead and click on go to footer in the navigation so that we can look at some more things. A moment ago, I mentioned adding a website to the bottom of the page. We could simply do that by just typing. So we'll go ahead and type in a web page. From here, we can do things like center it. If we go to the home tab, we can click center. In our options group, we have the option of choosing a different first page. And notice that that footer disappeared from our first page. We can also select things like different odd and even pages. 
in our position, we can change our header and our footer margin. Currently, it's set at that 0.5, but maybe for the footer, we only want it to be 0.3. Notice over here on the right, it's pushing that down. I also want to look here at page number. I'm going to put my cursor to the right of this URL and I'm going to hit space a couple of times so that we have a little bit of separation between our text and what we're about to insert. Under page number, you have some built in ones for top and bottom and page margin, but you also have current position. And what the current position will do is place that number style that you choose in the location where your cursor's at. If I choose this one right here, notice it went ahead and it put that from the location. And when you're done editing the header and footer, you can double click within the body of the document or from the ribbon, you can click close header and footer. And it went ahead and it took us out of that. The last thing that we're told that we should be able to do is to configure page background elements. We'll go back to the design tab. And from here, we're gonna be in the page background group. We'll go ahead and click on page border first. In our settings, you'll want to choose the type of border that you'd like. We'll go ahead and select box. And then in our style, you're going to want to choose whichever style matches the task question or whatever you want for your document. We'll go ahead and select this dashed and dotted line. For our color, let's go ahead and select a green. We'll change the weight to four and a half. And that looks good to me. We'll click OK. And notice that's been applied to our document. In addition to adding a page border, you can also add a page color. And we have our theme colors, we have our standard colors, that's normal when choosing color. But what I want you to see is the fill effects. Because there's a lot of settings in this window. If you wanted to play with the gradient, you have a texture. Notice that when I click on a texture, that the name appears here. We have patterns. And the same thing, that pattern name is appearing here. Then you have the option of adding a picture. For this, we'll add that dotted 80%, and it really washes out our document. I'm going to hit Control-Z on the keyboard just so that we can see our document again, because we're going to look at adding a watermark. Microsoft has some built-in ones that you can choose from, but if we click on Custom Watermark, we have the option of adding our own watermark to the document. You can add your own text should you choose, and you can not only add what you want it to say, but you can change things like your font and size and color and how it's put across the document. But let's look at adding a picture watermark. If we click select picture, while you can search online and go to your OneDrive account, we're gonna search from our hard drive. We're gonna select this Peter Pan image and click insert. Now our scale here is set to auto, but we can change our scaling options. And then we have washout. And wash out, what it does is it fades the image out so that it's not so bold in the background. And that'll allow you to read the text that's in front of the watermark. We'll go ahead and click apply. And we can click close. For some reason, my Microsoft's coming up with an error message. Not really sure why. But if we look here at the document, you can see my watermark in the background. We're on the fourth subdomain, inspect documents for issues. The first thing that we're told that we should be able to do is to locate and remove hidden properties and personal information. We're going to go to the file tab and we're in the inspect document. We're going to click the check for issues drop down. And for this, we want to select inspect document. And it tells us that this will check the document for hidden properties or personal information. In this window, you want to make sure that you have checked off anything that it has you looking for. For example, this says specifically personal information. Well, document properties and personal information is listed here. We want to make sure that we have that checked. But if I wanted to look for headers or footers, I'd want to make sure that the headers, footers, and watermarks is also checked. Once we've looked and we found everything that we needed, we'll click inspect. And it tells me that it found some document properties and personal information and also found headers and footers. But for this, all we want to do is click remove all. And right here, I have this title tag word. If we click remove all, notice that it was removed. We can click close. The next thing that we're told that we should be able to do is to locate and correct accessibility issues. If we click the check for issues drop down and we look at check accessibility, it says it checks the document for content that people with disabilities might find difficult to read. So if we click this, 
Notice it opens up this pane. It's telling me I have an error. It gives me some warnings. One of the things that it's flagging me for is alternative text on this picture on page one. So if I click this picture one, I get this drop down. If I click the drop down, it gives me some recommended actions. I can mark it as decorative or I can click add a description. And if I type in Peter Pan and I close out of that, notice it disappeared and Word helped me fix that. We're going to close out of this. The last thing we want to look at is in this inspect document section, check for compatibility. And what this does is it checks for features not supported by earlier versions of Word. So if we select this, nothing pops up. I don't have any issues. Some things to note is you can select your version and you can have it check when saving. We'll click OK.